and it hits me, oh my gosh, this is that triangle. You know, there's explanation for everything that occurred in the Rendlesham Forest incident that doesn't involve aliens at all. It was completely silent. It comes right over our heads. He saw a classic flying saucer really standing in the clearing. He turned over to my father and held his hand and he looked in his eyes and he said, we're not alone. Welcome to Podcast UFO for our live show. We're live every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on podcastufo.com. During the show, feel free to participate live in our chat room. And don't forget to like us on our very active Facebook page. Hello and welcome to the show. I'm Martin Willis, your host. And we have an interesting show this evening. We have Grant Cameron coming up. Uh, we're going to be talking about not just the presidential you know, UFO thing, but a, a bunch of other stuff, too, he wanted to speak about. And before that, we have Alejandro Rojas coming up with the UFO updates in just a couple of minutes. Thank you for supporting the show. If you're helping us out for only $2 or more per month, you can help pay for some of that bandwidth that we have uh, cranking up here. And uh, I appreciate if you can help. If you can't, you can still listen to the show for free every Wednesday at 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Podcast UFO and PSN Radio. You can also listen to the full entire show on the Dark Matter Digital Network. That's every Thursday at 10 to midnight. That's Eastern Standard Time. All right, that's enough for me. How are you doing, Alejandro? I am well. How are you, my friend? Doing great tonight. Good. Good, I'm excited. Sometimes you get excited to do a show. Sometimes, you know, you're like, huh. But, uh... Um, mm-hmm. and a lot of times it has nothing to do with the guests. It's just how your mood is. And I'm just in a great mood. So, yeah, sometimes you have low energy. I'm usually pretty excited still, even if I have low energy, uh, especially if you have the right guest, first of all, they could perk you up That's and, true. and make you happy or, or you can just like, be like, okay, you could, you ask a few questions and they, they kind of take, let them take charge and, and give the information. Yeah. Um, which I don't mind anyway. I don't mind either, but you have to stay on your toes because uh, you do. Yeah, you can easily. So you them, can, they can all of a uh-huh. sudden say, "You know what I'm talking about," and then you say, "Ah, uh, what? what? Yeah, yeah." Oh, I'm always in the conversation, but uh, plus you got to be ready to have the BS card ready. <laughs> That's true. Just almost kidding. the drop button. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on for UFO news? Yeah. Oh, there's some UFOs out there. So let's see. Um, Of course, the tabloids are still running BS just to keep everybody up to date on that. I don't think there is one that kind of made some news, though, um, in uh, Bolton, a town of Bolton. And actually, I'm going to be writing that up. And in fact, let me write that up and I'll give you more information on that next week. I'll probably have the story up later today. But uh, all right. Just people might have heard of this video in Bolton. And I'll explain it. We do have it in our, our daily headlines, and I'll hopefully have this story up by the end of the day, um, hopefully by the time your show's over. Uh, but essentially, these people have their security camera up, and during this short video, they were looking at their security camera because it's a motion detector uh, on their cars, and they were in the U.K., and they were afraid of someone breaking in or something. The camera comes on for a little while. It's only like 40 seconds or so. A lot of people are like, where's the rest of the video? But there is no more video. What triggered the camera, they're not sure. They say probably their cat. But what's interesting is over the rooftops, you see uh, about mm, 20 seconds into the video, in between a couple of the rooftops, you there's a white orb that kind of goes by. At first, you're kind of like, oh, maybe it's just a meteorite. But then you see it come on, uh, you know, another behind another house and then it turns and goes in front of that house and then the video ends so Mm. very very strange or video especially when something turns you know and yeah you can explain away a lot of like the straight line uh, Mm -hmm. movement of of lights or or what may look like an orb but uh, when it turns it becomes a lot trickier to uh... then you got to say (laughs) wtf This is that a, is strange yeah. AF. <laughs> That's right. Uh, See, 
And by the way, I don't say bad words. So when I say AF or WTF, I mean, what the frick? Oh. Or, or that is crazy. AF is as flip. Yeah. So just, I, I don't mean the other word. I mean flip typically when I refer to F. I see. Just okay. so people know. Yeah. Just, just in case your kids are listening, we're, we're all set with that. Yeah. <laughs> there's a, there's a couple other crazy AF videos out there though, too, at least pictures. All right. Well, let's um, hear about them. Yeah. One of these is in Washington, D.C. This is a Roger Marsh story. He's a director of MUFON or a director of communication for MUFON who writes for us, uh, MUFON cases. And this is a worm-like object that this said, person said was hovering in the sky at about 40 feet. It almost looks like a balloon, like a, a, those long balloons you, you make animal shapes with, but it's no real shape you can distinguish. But this was about 11 a.m. on October 2nd. Um, this person saw this up in the sky, kind of freaked out and said, what the heck is that? He said he ran over, he took a couple of pictures, then ran over to get a better picture closer to the object, and the object was gone. It disappeared. He called it a worm-like shape, and you can kind of see what it means. Somebody, uh, kind of being funny, said it looks like the symbol for, uh, you know, formerly known as it, the symbol that Prince used for his name for a period of time. But it is a really strange picture uh, of some object floating. You can see a apartment complex close to the person, and uh, it's just past that. So it's not too high in the sky, um, but yeah, this, it's pretty weird. Pretty weird one. Yeah, yeah. I, I looked at that, and uh, mm-hmm. I know it looks. Uh, I think this is uh, last week. You did a report on like another uh, biomorphic type shape, uh-huh. thing, and that's kind of what this looks like too. Yeah, really strange. There was another one in Colorado, Superior, Colorado, which is near Boulder. Um, this person said he caught a. Uh, five metallic-like objects on his photograph. He felt that the object was about 30,000 feet. Not sure how this person determined that. But um, these objects are really weird. They kind of look like something that is reflective. Uh, To me, they they look more translucent, but perhaps it's because they're far away. Uh, This person felt that they look like they were metal. Um, but this person said they seem to fluctuate in brightness. Uh, he said potentially from changing its position with respect to the sun, which it does seem to be the bright spots are reflections. Uh, they said that this was, uh, you know, they were able to use their digital zoom to get the picture. They used a Nikon uh, SLR. Uh, they took the pictures of the objects and then the objects disappeared, they say. So did you see those pictures? I did not, you know, but this okay. kind of reminds me, when I was helping with your show yesterday, mm-hmm. uh, you jokingly said, keep your eyes, you know, since I was outside. Oh, uh, yeah. Look up at the sky. And then I said, right after we quit uh, recording, I said, you're not going to believe this, but I see something in the sky, a bright light. And um, I realized that what it was was a reflection of the sun, which was going down off of probably off of an airplane because it like disappeared also. So mm-hmm. I'm wondering if the that's kind of, you know, I'm not saying it is for sure, but I'm wondering if it's possible that's what they were seeing. Could be. I don't know what the heck. It's, it's like I said, it's strange AF. So really weird one. Another real, I'll just throw another one in there if that's okay. Yeah. West Virginia, Barber County, another MUFON case. Four lights in a triangle shape, says the witness. They posted a video. People on the uh on youtube looked at the video and said this is lame af and the reason why is because it just it's a very poor video and this person says he has a crappy android that doesn't take (laughs) good videos but luckily this person took pictures and in the story roger posted he he put the pictures in there so the video is not very impressive at all you would just think it's venus or something this guy is mistaking for something strange um he took this video at 6.18 a.m. when he got up and, and was at work. Him and his uh, co-workers were on this hill, and they were getting their machinery out, not sure what he does, to do their job when he saw it. This was on September 5th. Uh, it was still dark out. 
And the pictures are strange. So we took these pictures and zoomed in, and he's like, what the heck is this? And one of the pictures, you can see that this is not just one light in the sky. You can clearly see it's four lights. Uh, three of those lights are in a line, and then one of the lights is below the light on the left, and so it is sort of a triangular shape. Uh, so this is weird. You know, with just looking at the video alone, I can see why the people on YouTube were saying this is stupid. Uh, but when you look at the, the pictures, uh, it is really strange. So an, another good one, some strange stuff, Roger, has been uh, getting out of the MUFON files here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know a lot of times the, the videos just do not do any justice to what right. you're seeing, no matter what you're videoing. Uh-huh. Um, on a on a, a phone, and that technology is going to get better. I know. So, mm-hmm. Just all for take the future, time. we'll have better better videos in the future. I would yeah. imagine. I should probably. Imagine. Yeah. If we make it, maybe like hollow cameras. Do you think that would be something in the future? Wait a minute. Did you just say if we make it? <laughs> if we make it, yeah. Through the bottleneck of technology, as they say. <sighs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, with all the nukes out there, and uh, it, it's a dangerous world, my friend, a it dangerous is. world. It is. On that note, do you have anything mm-hmm. else, or is that it? Well, I don't want to leave on a sad note. <laughs> uh, what would be something happy I could say? Um, <laughs> e- oh, well, things uh, don't want to bring up politics uh that's not happy uh, all right well I, I got an idea the weather's great out here <laughs> that's right so, it's a really good time of year for weather out there yeah but uh, let me just ask you this have you i know february is a long way off it uh, is but i'm still excited already for coming out oh, that way yes did you have have you had any new guests since the last time you brought up uh, the guest list I don't know. That's a good question because I can't remember when I brought up the guest list last. I think I did tell you about John Alexander. It's funny. There was one person Mm -hmm. who posted and said, oh, your lineup looks awesome. It's incredible. I'm so excited. But why the heck are you having John Alexander? He's a disinformation agent. But uh, what's interesting, and and it's it's frustrating that people say stuff like that because – you know, just because someone has a different point of view, however, and some of your listeners are going to be like, he's right, he is. Well, then prove it. Tell me what makes you feel this way, except for it's just your opinion because of what he says. Um, I don't feel that anything he's saying is so extraordinarily uh, outlandish that it's not outside the, the realm of possibility. Uh, essentially, that the Air Force doesn't know what they're doing and they don't know what the heck to do about UFOs. Um, but this is what's great is that he actually, for the first time, is going to be speaking about his own sighting. And so that's pretty pretty cool. And what's weird is he has it says it has to do with like uh, healings and all of this other weird stuff. So it's going to be kind of cool. But uh, otherwise, I don't think I even have this person posted yet. But we have confirmed, and I need to do that. Erling Strand. Uh, so he mm-hmm. is uh, a professor from the University of Norway who has yeah. been investigating the Hesdalen lights. And what's great is that, you know, they've been looking at it as possibly a plasma sort of phenomena. He says, no, this isn't plasma. This is much stranger. Uh, And he feels that it it does uh, appear to be intelligently controlled. So he's going to give more information to that effect. Really great guy. He was at MUFON. Uh, I got to meet him at the MUFON Symposium, and we're super excited to have him participating in the 2017 UFO Congress. Right. (laughs) All right. That's great. Uh, Thanks so much, and uh, we'll be talking to you next week. All right. Talk to you soon, buddy. All righty. All right. Hang in, everyone, for the quick music break. We'll be right back with Grant Cameron. We'll be right back with Grant Cameron.
That music is by Cary Lloyd Whitehouse, probably for some movie that uh, he has written that for or something, but he's given us uh, all his music to play here and there. And we have a few other people um, that are giving us some music coming up soon. Um, we have Grant Cameron on now. Welcome to the show, Grant. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me on, Martin. I appreciate it. Yes, I think I didn't look on my show, but I think it's been a few years. I think you were only on for a short uh, stint uh, catching up on something you were doing, I think, at the time. Uh-huh. Then we'll have lots to talk about. Yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> and I did get to meet you last year over in uh, in Maine. You made Maine, a trip. yes. And you Once are in Canada, right? Yes, right in the middle, right above North Dakota, right? Uh, it's famous for being the coldest city in the world. There's actually a spot <laughs> on Mars uh, where uh, during one point it was colder here than it was on Mars. So apparently there's a, a spot on Mars that's called Winnipeg. Oh, my goodness. Wow. I had, I had no idea that's where you were. Oh, my God. I've heard about the winters here. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. something else. So, Grant, uh, for the person um, that has not heard you, I think most people listening probably know um, about you. I know you had a sighting back in the 1970s and that changed everything and all that. Um, and just to let the listener know, um, we have some questions that came in that I'd like to uh ask you during the first part of the show and then sure. we'll get into other things that you would like to talk about you sent me a list of a few things interesting yeah. um yeah. but can you give the uh listener that may not have heard you before kind of a a quick nutshell of uh who you are and uh, what got your interests uh perked up in uh, ufos okay i've been in it since 1975 i had a whole series of sightings in 1975 the only reason I ever got involved in UFOs was there's a small con- town called Carmen, Manitoba, which is about 25 miles from the North Dakota border, just above the, where all the uh, Minuteman missile silos were. Mm. And this town was being inundated from about February till about November of 1975. And the only reason I went out there was because I wanted to see what everybody was seeing. I had no interest in UFOs. I'd never thought about extraterrestrial life. And I went out there to see what I was looking at, thinking I bought the lottery ticket and there's a chance you can win, but you're not going to win. And I could not believe it. This thing flew right in front of the car, down low, pretty close to the car. It was not a light in the sky. It was an object. And it changed my life. Uh, I started to gather all the um, sightings after the second night. I went back two nights later, had an encounter where this thing came right at us the second night, and it was in fairly close again. And at that point, I decided that this was pretty bizarre, that why is somebody not uh, talking to the people in the town? Because the rumor was, and it was true, that half the people in the town had seen this thing over this one-year period. And I gathered all that material together, uh, tried to get it published, and um, the local publisher who should have published it, because there's a famous story around here, said, Mr. Cameron, you may believe in this kind of stuff. Count me among men believers. And at that point, I said, this is a total waste of time. And I completely lost any interest in sightings, and I was just interested in what was it that I had seen, and right. who in the wor- who in the world had the answer to what I'd seen. So that was that's the uh, from say 1977 until now. That has been my pursuit is to find out who's got the answer, who should we be listening to, uh, and my sort of underlying belief that somebody has to know what's going on. Yeah, you know, I I I wonder that I I have said an, a few times on the show too that. Um, perhaps they know something like, say, let's just say some part of the U.S. government, uh, you know, will agree and knows that something is going on. But <clears throat> the thing that I've wondered is perhaps they really don't know in exactly what it is, but want to keep it quiet because um, if they don't know, they wouldn't know how to tell the public. Um, I used to believe that. I don't believe it anymore. I absolutely believe they know and the whole catch to the cover-up is that they want you to think they don't know because, um, as I say, if you look behind the cover, behind the, the, the uh, curtain, it is the president of the United States who is running the cover-up. He is. 